Instead of quenching in a bucket of water, can you use a spray bottle for bigger projects? Guys, when we quench our plates, this is only for practice. We, in, in real life, we don't quench. We don't want to quench. What could be the repercussion of quenching your material when it's hot? Crap, you make it brittle. Good job, you've been studying or something? Good, well, it makes it brittle, right? So if we make it brittle, it, we're changing the inside structure of it, right? which means that our weld could fail. Molecular structure. Molecular structure. Is the root opening always a quarter inch or can it be bigger sometimes? As an inspector, you guys that know the truth. 90% of the time, yes. Perspective of this. I'm TIG welding and I'm gonna TIG weld on 11 gauge material, which is pine, roughly an eighth of an inch. Would I still want a quarter inch root opening? Bingo. So, what we say is this, one half T. Yeah, I agree. All right, uh, I'm, I'm gonna explain it to you, okay? So one half T. T is equal to the thickness of the thinnest material. I know it's a lot. So if we're using 11 gauge material, and we said it's 0.125 about, then we do our math. So T is a substitute. So T is the thickness of my material. So if my material is 0.125, and we multiply it by one half, it's like dividing, right? 0.125 times 0.5, zero, six, five. That should be a root opening. So R, so in, when we start to go into more towards code book and such, they use substitute letters. R for root opening. T for the thickness of the material. Usually that's the thinnest material. So root opening equals one half times T. That's, that's what we're getting. So we take our plate. We could use a tape measure, but if we're using a quarter inch backing strip, we'll actually stick that backing strip back there like this and then stick the other plate next to it and it'll give us our spacing and then you just pop it on top and tack it onwards. But yes, this formula is a good formula to remember. And this will give you really good root openings for the thickness of material you're using. If we're talking about code book, we're talking about requirements for D11 testing, then we're going to use a quarter of an inch. When joining two pipes, do they also need backing like with the groove weld test? Two pipes together. Well, it kind of depends. It depends on what we're doing. Many times when we weld pipe, it's considered in process, which means things can be flowing through it or a section may be turned off just for a little bit. So that means they have a plug here and a plug here and a weld here. In that case, when we replace those pipes, there cannot be any backing. How are we gonna get it in there? In other ways, when we are able to get it in there, there are other types of backing that can be called a consumable insert, which means it's like a backing but it actually gets made into the well. There's also ones that are not removable, uh, like fiberglass or glass. There's also ceramic, and sometimes those are removable. It depends, I like, just kind of like chip them off. But it really depends on what you're welding and where you're welding. 90% of pipe welding will be open root. There will be no packing. Just because you have to think about it, how am I gonna access to get my backing out once they put it in there. This is, this, and I, I think you guys need to understand when we think about backing and such, or when we talk about pipe, you can use stick, TIG, MIG, and sometimes even flux for the most part. If I have a pipe like this, and I stuck another pipe to it, and I have a backing strip, and it sticks out of my the back of my pipe at least a quarter of an inch. Is that on the inside? On the inside, it has to be on the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, whenever if I have to leave it in there, when everything anything goes through it, we actually create an eddy that hits the inside of that. It also changes the mechanic of the pipe because areas that were designed to take the flow, like an elbow or things like that are changed. So now, instead of us going further down the pipe and it being kind of reinforced in that area, we may be bringing it to the top of the pipe 
and actually prematurely aging the, the pipe and it fails. So that's one of the reasons why you have to be really accurate with height. Nothing protruding. You, have, you cannot have anything more than 1 16th of an inch protruding into your weld. How would I find out how long the chain intermittent weld should be so that the piece doesn't deform or when doing staggering, how long each weld should be? Tell me guys, what do you think? How, how would I determine that? Chain intermittent. What does chain intermittent look like? Okay, so this is a fillet, right? Now we said this was chain, so where does the other one go? On the other side, right? Next to it or kind of a side to it? Straight up and down, next to it, okay? Now when we say chain intermittent, right? So we're saying this is a fillet weld, one on the innermost side and one on the other side. <coughs> if we said three inches, what? Long and a one inch pitch. And then we're gonna say three inches long and one inch pitch. That means these are staggered, right? But they're chained together. So when it looks on our plate, so three, center to center, three, center to center, right? Now the other side's gonna look just the same. Now how, would, how could this be a staggered, in, or a, I should say staggered intermittent? instead of a chain, it moves over, right? What's it gonna look like on the other side? Staggered, right? So instead of being here, it's gonna be here, okay? So they're opposite of each other. So now, it tells us how long it is and what our spacing is, our pitch, right? Our center to center spacing. So, usually what will happen is, if we have a plate like this, we need to look at it and go, okay, they say to weld from here to here. Measure it out before you weld it. Otherwise, we could run into serious issues. You also have to take into account, if it's really, really thin stuff, I may need to go back and forth on, from one side to another. Because otherwise, yes, I will deform my material and it will have problems. Yeah, Almost yeah. like opposite. There, it, opposite, there you go. That's the best word to say. Okay, so if I have fingernailing on an electrode and chip off too much of the flux, can I still salvage it or do I need to use a new one? Can it be salvaged? Say that again, sorry. So it says, if I have a, a welding rod and it had fingernailing on it, right? You guys know what the fingernailing is, where the flux comes up? Oh, yeah. And the, and the, the wires kind of melted down in it, okay? So if we chip off too much, right? It'll leave the, the core wire sticking out a little bit. Do I have to throw it away? No. No, what do we do? Cut it. Well, you can cut it, but me and my infinite wisdom, <laughs> To get to the right size. And then you go. And you just gotta be careful not to make it stick because otherwise it is a pain. Weld the world. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for another part. Weld the world.